Hello everybody, welcome to this week's case review. In this video newsletter, I like to share stories about the patients that we take care of. We talk about the good outcomes, we talk about the bad outcomes, we like to share some of our learnings. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback as we continue to share, educate, and hopefully elevate the standard of care in our sleep community. My name is Sahil Chopra, I'm one of the sleep physicians here at Empower Sleep. And today's case is a uh, story of a patient who has sleep apnea and is using a dental appliance. So let me go ahead and jump jump right in. So this individual, they are in their late 40s and um, was initially evaluated for obstructive sleep apnea because of symptoms of excessive daytime fatigue, sleepiness, and as well as hypertension. They had an initial WatchPat home sleep test done. Let me go ahead and share this here. That uh, was done in 2-2021, so a few years ago. And that study revealed that they had substantial REM dominant obstructive sleep apnea. So you can tell that just by looking at this oxygen saturation signal. And this is a normal oximetry, or kind of normal oximetry, and you can see that there's substantial um, sort of a sawtooth pattern here, 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 and here. And this fits the picture of uh, when REM sleep is typically happening. And uh, this is REM dominant sleep apnea. Their total burden of sleep apnea was moderate. This is using the 3% apnea hypopnea index and it was twice as high during REM fitting the picture of REM dominance. So they had this sleep test done they were prescribed CPAP and they had severe intolerance to CPAP so eventually they went the path of a dental appliance. Let me pull up the sleep test report from the dental appliance. So one thing that you'll notice is that this report is a little bit different than the watch pad report and this was done the original sleep test was done in 2021 February of 2021 this sleep test was done in May of 2022 after the patient had failed CPAP the other thing to note here is that uh, this was done with a ResMed apnea link device and this doesn't measure sleep it looks at just breathing so the respiratory event index and that too of 4% was in the low teens here 13.3 and so that's you know that fits mild sleep apnea it would probably about it would probably be about the same had this been a three percent respiratory event index but they they have you know substantial they have moderate somewhere between mild to likely moderate apnea but using the three percent using the four percent index this is mild sleep apnea this patient eventually got a dental appliance that was prescribed. They had already tried CPAP, so they went the path of a dental appliance and had a repeat sleep test done with the dental appliance. And let me show that to you here. And with the dental appliance, what you'll notice is there was that there was no substantial difference the uh, 4% REI respiratory event index was still the same but the patient started feeling better and that's something that we see um, fairly frequently where patients go on a dental appliance their numbers don't substantially change there's still hypoxia there are still apneic events but they feel somewhat better so they had this follow-up study done that showed uh, still residual sleep apnea after using a dental appliance for a year. So there was almost a one year gap between the uh, study before the dental appliance and then op his dental appliance was quote unquote optimized and then I had a follow up study almost a year later with the dental appliance and although the patient felt somewhat better, there was no change in the data. So after this happened, this patient was referred to us. And let me share with you what happened when we saw him. 
uh, what you'll see here, this is the Empower Sleep Patient Dashboard. And when he started testing, you can see how now, so we have uh, multiple nights of data. On the left, you see the apnea index, the number of pauses in breathing per hour. This is a 3% index, not a 4% index. And on the right, in the purple, we have the sleep quality index. And this I'll overlay in just a second. But what you see is with the oral appliance, he continued to have sort of moderate sleep apnea. This is almost the same as how his sleep was when he did the original study with the watch pad back in 2021. So you can see that there's still moderate sleep apnea. Um, when he uses the oral appliance, his apnea indices are somewhere in the teens, high teens to low 20s without the dental appliance and it's, it's 26, so maybe a little bit better. Um, 22, 22, about the same. And once he, so even one of the nights he didn't use, it. so this is a, an excellent example where sometimes there can be so much night to night variability where on one night you're, you can have 15 pauses in breathing per hour and on other nights you can have 26, almost a, a delta of 10. And what you can start seeing here is even with the dental appliance, there was really no substantial difference. And what ended up changing the game was when he combined a sleep apnea mandibular advancement device with a wedge pillow. The problem became he could not stay on the incline all night and he didn't feel any better. Although his numbers look better, but he didn't feel substantially better because he started developing back pain. And what you, what you can see in terms of the sleep quality is the sleep quality index was like in the high 20s to high 30s. There was a couple of 40s here. But um, when you combine the wedge pillow with the sleep apnea appliance, the apnea indices were substantially reduced. Um, and the sleep quality was uh, was 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 my only mildly reduced so the sort of you know learning point here is all you know sometimes dental appliances by themselves they don't they may not solve the, they may not solve the problem but when we combine dental appliances with other modalities like in this case adding a wedge pillow you can see that there was a substantial reduction in the apnea index the problem, however, was that he could not tolerate the wedge pillow because of back issues. So wanted to share this with you. I think you'll find this interesting. 50% uh, reduction in apnea indices, almost 50% reduction in apnea indices when you combine a dental appliance with a wedge pillow. Although this is not the greatest solution, we're still working with him. I'll keep you posted on how things go. But I thought this was uh, some useful insights for, for you to be aware of. And if you're taking care of a patient who is in a dental appliance and there is still, and, and you have achieved maximal um, advancement, what are some of the things that can be tried to, to see if they are helping the patient improve their breathing and sleep quality? A wedge pillow is something that can be, can be tried. All right, take care. I hope you guys found this video useful. Please um, share your feedback, thoughts, and comments, and uh, look forward to Keep, keep these going. Bye-bye.